one of the things that struck me was uh, the attention given both by the mayor and by the council to this uh, you know, really firm line created by the, by the last charter um, between legislative and executive functions, um, which I totally agree with. I, I, I totally uh, appreciate the clarity that exists now uh, as opposed to some of the blurry lines that were there before. But I, I, also, I also think that, that there is room within uh, that strict division of responsibility for there to be a little more discussion between the executive branch and the, and the le legislative branch without stepping over the line and interfering with one another's prerogatives. And particularly with regard to the, the budget process and the establishment of legislative priorities, and those are the two areas where I suggested um, the possibility of, uh, of addressing those in the Charter. Um, the process, is, as you all know, is outlined in, in, in the Charter, is that the, the, the budget development process is a purely mayoral function. We, we, we have a strong mayor system, and that's, that's, that's the way it is, and we're fortunate to have enough to have a, a mayor who does a really good job using the, the strong mayor system. Uh, uh, aided by very competent staff. Um, so the way the budget process works is they're mandated by charter. There's a, con there's a, there's a meeting in January with the school committee and the, and, the, and the city council where the mayor puts forward a very informative presentation that he and Susan Wright have worked on. It's a PowerPoint presentation with lots of facts and figures and pie charts and bar graphs. Um, and it's usually then by the way, do I have a three-minute time limit? If so, uh, uh, I'll make it brief. I'll, I'll, I realize well, I should speed this yes, up. Yes, we, we value conciseness. Uh, <laughs> oh, you should have told me that two and a half minutes ago. Okay. okay. In any event, that meeting is it's informative, but it doesn't promote policy level. What are our real priorities here? What are the real issues facing the city in the next year? And there's no other time in the process for that. Um, the budget in April, the 228-page document, uh, uh, arrives. And as you know, the council at that point can do all the hearings we want, and all the debate that we want, but ultimately it's up or down. We can, we can eliminate an item if we want. But, but the, as we've, there have been times when we've raised more substantive questions and the response has been, well, it's a little late in the process for that. And, that's exactly the point. What I would urge is that earlier in the process there be sort of a more policy level, substantive, conceptual give and take before the, the budget document is actually put together. It will always be the mayor's prerogative to put together the document, but I think there's room for a little, little more uh, substantive, as I say, conversation earlier in the process. And uh, we haven't found a way to do that. I've talked to the mayor about it, I've talked to Bill Dwight about it, I've talked to Wright about it. Everybody agrees it's a good idea, but it, it just hasn't really happened. So I would like to suggest that in the charter we say, well, in January, um, there should be that conversation. Uh, and perhaps it should involve school committee as well. And on the legislative side, there once was, when I arrived at the council, in the council rules, something that said that the council will once a year adopt a resolution of what the council considers to be its legislative priorities. In, in other words, what are the issues we really want to take to the legislature and what are the, what's the legislation uh, at the State House we want to support? Well, it never happened. And so next time around, that rule was just discarded. So then we tried to put it back in and say, let's at least once a year have a conversation about what our legislative priorities are. As you may, may know, the school committee actually has uh, an agreed upon set of legislative priorities and they kind of agree that if any of us has an opportunity to talk to our state rep or our senator, here's our priorities. We don't do that in council, it's a free-for-all. And it will always be thus, but I think it would be a better informed free-for-all if we had the opportunity to discuss among ourselves and with the mayor what we see as our legislative priorities. And um, that rule suggestion got, uh, I, I agreed to, to table it because the council president agreed 
we don't need a rule to do it, we'll just do it. Well, we, so all these things, the budget discussion, we'll just do it. Uh, discussion about legislative parties, we'll just do it. It, 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 it. it just doesn't seem to happen. So that's why I'm suggesting that we put it in the charter. So there you go. And I'm sorry for not being as concise as I could have been. But that's, that's and, and, I, and, I, and, I, uh, and I sent to, to Stan and Sam some suggested languages to kind of get the ball rolling. Yes. And I feel I should read that language to some degree. And Danny, I will not forward this to you so you have it correct. Uh, uh, Dennis has proposed to his first point that we would add a second paragraph in section 7 2, annual budget policy. Uh, this sentence also, before the commencement of the budget process, the City Council President shall place on the agenda of a regularly scheduled City Council meeting. A general discussion with the mayor about spending priorities and revenue potential for the coming fiscal year. On his second point, Dennis has suggested this language, uh, and he's not clear about where in the charter this should be placed, so this is something that we would consider along with the concept placement of these two sentences. In January of every year, the City Council President shall place on the agenda of a regularly scheduled City Council meeting a general discussion with the Mayor about the City's legislative priorities in the upcoming State Legislative Session. The President may elect to invite to this discussion the Senator and the Representative representing North Hampton in the State Legislature. So those are two items that we'll consider at some point. Thanks, Dennis. Sure. Uh, do either of the other two uh, members of the public wish to speak? No, thank no. you. No, okay. Uh, uh, I have mail here from a Ward 1 resident named Andy, or possibly Audrey. Austin? I don't know this person. As a Ward 1 resident, I am ready to ask you to support ranked choice voting in Northampton. It is, it is a promising development that we support increased accuracy in our voting process. Okay. Um, also, you all received as uh, Part of the email from Andy Lesko today, the uh, letter from uh, City Councilor Marianne Labarge, uh, supporting uh, an appointed support. That is uh, an issue that we will be devoting some attention to. So, if I could, this seems like a good segue to pass this out to people just to have a look at, which is something that Annie had generated.
suggested or uh, at least were mentioned last week by uh, the last meeting by uh, several uh, different city officials who spoke. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. The, uh, uh, the attachment one related laws, um, maybe Alan, you can help clarify this. This was a question that was raised at the, at the last meeting about <coughs> the purpose of this attachment and um, uh, how it relates to the rest of the, the charter. Well, there were some special laws, um, and I'm not sure exactly which one you're, you're referring to, and I apologize for not being here at last meeting, but um, there were some special acts as part of the old charter. If I recall correctly, one of them was the Board of Public Works that was to remain in effect after the charter was ratified by the voters until such time as the mayor reorganized government pursuant to his administrative order. At that point, they fall away. If those are what you're talking about, if there are specific ones you want me to address, let me know and I will certainly address them to the, uh, you know, to this committee. I mean, because we didn't, we, we didn't want, you know, things like the Board of Public Works yeah. to just disappear with nothing to replace it, so. <coughs> Um, it was that period of time before the uh, mayor did his administrative order. In some respects, it was a, a transition. It was a transitional provision, yes. Okay. Does it make sense, Alan, to look at that now and to eliminate anything that is no longer necessary in that attachment? We could clean it up. Uh, I think by operation of law, they have already gone away, but it would make sense, I think, to clean up the document so that nobody else is asking the same question you're asking right now. Okay, so um, I haven't actually examined that attachment in any detail, but uh, you know, this is an agenda item for the next meeting to look at that and um, to eliminate anything that is no longer necessary. Okay, now we're on. Uh, does yes. anyone know where to find that? It, it's on the, I linked it at the top of that Google Doc, and it's also at the top of the city charter. I can bring it out here if you can. Yes. Okay. Okay, now we're on to uh, uh, wording changes, and I'm going to ask um, uh, the first one on the agenda and the first one on the sheet that was distributed uh, as an attachment to Annie's email today. Uh, is section 2-2, President and Vice President Election and Powers. And uh, I'm going to ask Lynn to, whose document, uh, she generated this attached document. Uh, I'm going to ask her to uh, move the uh, proposed change to that section. Uh, so I'm passing around a track change version of those four sections. Although they don't fully line up with what's listed here. So I'll only talk about the ones that are listed here. Is that what you want? Yeah, uh, yes, I want you first to address uh, section 2-2 two -two sure, and actually two -two. to move the change that we're, we're going to consider. Yep. Uh, so 2-2 two -two, um, is the uh, President and Vice President Election Terms Powers. Section B talks about powers and duties, and the President of the Council shall prepare the agenda for City Council meetings. Currently, it says in consultation with the Mayor and the City Clerk. Uh, and at the last meeting, the City Clerk spoke that um, that City Clerk reference should be removed. Um, and after reviewing it, we, and con um, consulting with the mayor, um, the mayor doesn't set the, or prepare the agenda for city council meetings. So uh, the recommendation we had was to just strike that whole, sen that whole uh, part of the sentence where in consultation with the mayor and the city clerk. So it would read, the president shall prepare the agenda for city council meetings, period. That's the change that you're 
moving in. Is there a second? Second. Okay. This um, this then goes further than um, the the wording, the suggested wording on the agenda. We're, we're simply leaving it to the president to prepare the agenda for city council meetings, which is aligned with the current practice. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. A yes vote would remove the words in consultation with the mayor and the city clerk. Okay. Yes. I just want to be clear. Uh, uh, an affirmative vote would recommend yes. the yes. removal right. of yes. this language. Yes. All um, of our work are uh, is simply right. recommendations. Um, we're not. Uh, Actually, we're not Essentially, we're creating one big document. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. And first of all, we recommend the removal of the word in consultation with the mayor and the city clerk. Any roll call, please? Um, Stan Moulton? Yes. Robbie Sullivan? Yes. Dylan Gaffney? Yes. Sam Hopper? Yes. Bob Bullrice? Yes. Patty Yui? Absolutely. Molly Fox? Yes. Glenn Simmons? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Approved seven to zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is what we're talking about. Item on the agenda is section 26, rules of procedure, uh, subsection C, uh, uh, IB. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, suggest that we not vote on the um, on the change that's proposed on the agenda, and I'm going to have Lynn explain why. Uh, so well, let me let me move that we not vote on that, that section uh, two six. There's second. Oh. Yes, oh, Sam. Okay. okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, so okay. so two dash six. Uh, after looking at it, um, the the city clerk does maintain the proceedings of the city council. It it doesn't mean that the clerk is the one they're taking the minutes, but after the meeting, the record and the documents are maintained by the city clerk. Uh, so we didn't feel that a change was needed um, because it's not it's not different than what is actually done. Okay. Alan, do you want to speak in? Please? Yeah, the, the, the clerk to the city council is not a statutory position. And there isn't always a clerk to the city council. It doesn't have to be, a, I suppose it would be chaos without it, but um, uh, that's not a statutory position. Under the, the laws of the Commonwealth, the city clerk is the repository of the official records of the city. And I don't believe that we should be changing that okay. in the charter. Now, that's not to say that you know Laura doesn't have records of the city council that are in process, but the repository is the clerk. Okay. So the um, as you recall, last time the city clerk raised this question about distinguishing between the immediate meeting uh, minutes that are taken by the, the administrative assistant to the council. Alan's point is that that is not a statutory position, so that doesn't have to exist. It happens to exist now, but it is in fact. It's, it's the duty of the city clerk's office to maintain those records. That's right. So um, that's why I feel, based on the uh, recommendation from the mayor's office and Alan's recommendation, that that there's no need to change that language. But does anyone, you know, if anyone feels differently, please speak up. I mean, I think I can use the term in, in real time last time that yes. she doesn't maintain them in real time, but it's 
Yes. There are annual documents that reflect the actions of the city council that have to be presented for bonding purposes and filing the DOR, and those documents can only be stamped by the city clerk. So in that capacity, the repository of those official documents are in the clerk's office. Yes. So I would, you know, I would mention that. All right, I think just for record keeping sake, we don't need a roll call on this one, but uh, those in favor of not making any changes to that section, uh, uh, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So there's no, no changes to section 2-6. Uh, CID. I'm going to hold off, Lynn, on, on, your, yep. on the next two in your document and proceed to the... Stanley, I'm sorry, was there a motion? Yes, there was. The motion was not to make any changes, okay. to withdraw that. that. Who, who made it? What? I did. I did. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're going to proceed now to section 210, which is city council confirmation of certain appointments. Uh, you recall that um, there was some discussion of this at the last meeting. And the recommendation or the suggestion uh, was made uh, that we remove the, the wording of uh, uh, not less than seven and add to uh, more than 45 days after the referral, except during July and August. What happens in July and August? Is it the referral in July and August? Or what if the referral is at the end of June? I mean, I... Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll address that in a minute. Okay. Can we have a motion to uh, adopt those recommended changes? Bobby? I second. Okay. Uh, the, the point was made uh, last week, Alan, uh, that because the council only meets once yes, in yes. July and August, that mm -hmm. it may be, it may require special meetings to, to, um, to meet that. Right. Uh, and, um, so what would the time limit be in July and August? But they need to be more specific. Right. Okay. What would the time limit be? <clears throat> it would be none unless we set a longer, unless we suggested a longer time limit. And since since Councilor Dwight's not here and Councilor Bidwell's not running for the election, I will say that sometimes the council has to have special meetings, mm -hmm. and there are reasons that we want to put time limits on these because if you're going to leave positions open for a, you know extended period of time, work's not getting done, and you know sometimes you could you could fail of a quorum. Um, if there are enough uh, vacancies. So the time limit's there for a reason. Um, and, you know, I, I also want to just put this into context. We fortunately live in a community where the mayor and the council work very well together. If you go one community to our south, that is not, <laughs> that's not what's happening. And we get into a situation where um, uh, we don't have that, then the council can just sit on it all summer. So I would like to see if we're going to, if this committee is going to recommend an extension of that time, I think there needs to be a, a cap on it. Yeah. And I'm not comfortable voting on uh, this tonight without Council Dwight's uh, participation. So uh, I would like to uh, have that tape up. Can, can I, yeah. I, mean, I, I know I'm a member of the public tonight, but I think the, there was another issue, Alan, that was raised where the city council um, will refer an appointment out to the committee on social services, and let's say that the meeting is the following Monday. They won't, they won't take it up at the following Monday meeting because of this less than seven days. Oh, I don't have a, I don't have a problem. So, well, so that was that, that was the bigger issue more than the July and August, although that does come into play. That, that was the issue that I raised the last time was when when they refer out an appointment, they don't they 
and the Committee on City Services meets the following Monday or Tuesday. And is the Committee on City Services the one that does the yes. review? Yes, the appointments. That, that, that reviews the appointments and then yeah. recommends to full council. Right now. Right. It, you could change council rules and it could be a different committee that meets at a different time. The charter is uh, less easy to change. Yes, is what I'm right. you could pointing out. I, I'm more agnostic about the the seven day issue, but um, I'm I'm more concerned with you know, <coughs> capping the, the the length of time. I, mean, I, th I think that's there because there needs to be notice, and then people have to you know if people want to be there. Mm -hmm. That's my <coughs> concern that if we get rid of it, because I think I asked that why do we have the lower end cap and it's so you don't rush someone right, right through it, which, I mean, I understand the inconvenience of it for filling vacancies and whatnot, but it could also be problematic if, you know, they meet Thursday, it's past Monday, and that's it. Does it really give right. time for involvement for people who are Okay, I, I would like to hear from Councilor Dwight on this, so I am going to uh, ask and table this one together. Yes, yes. If, if, if I can just jump in quickly. I, I, I totally agree that it shouldn't be an open ended thing. We, that we the I, I sit on the City Services Committee, and yes, we have these timing issues that we need to juggle. And July and August is a slightly different situation. But yes, there, there, there should be, for the reasons that Alan points out, uh, some some date certain by which um, uh, by, by, by which referrals would have to be the referral process would need to be completed. So, well, having participated in that process, do you have a suggested? Um, um, you guys also this? pick your meeting schedule, right? True. And so it could change. The, 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 the other, for, for example, one way that we dealt with this just recently is to end a regular, regularly agended city council meeting to adjourn right. to go to a city services committee meeting yeah. to deal with it right then and there. Right. So we refer to the full committee or to full council and take care of it that way. So there's, there, there, there's flexibility in that way to work around it. Uh, one other thing that also happened was when the administrative code was um, drafted, a lot of the board and committee terms were changed to run fiscal year. So um, before it was just kind of all over the place, like people would just expire on October 10th or November 2nd, and it was everywhere, and it was a lot to keep track of all the time. Slowly we're getting to the point where boards turn over um, at the same, or at least um, staggered membership happens. So it's a lot easier to uh, estimate out when we would need to submit someone to council. So we've been aware of that, and have been trying to get them all in before the first meeting in June so they can mm -hmm. stay in the process and not hit that summer right. slump. Uh, yes, I'd still like to hear from you if you would have, would you suggest a different camp or do you think for the prop, prop, To tell the truth, I, I, I haven't even seen this language or realized this was, this was being talked about tonight. Um, I know there's probably a reference on the agenda that I didn't look at carefully. Um, <coughs> but, yeah. yeah, there's agenda copies on the three. Um, well, if I heard you right, you were going to defer this to you had Council yeah. Dwight's input anyway, so I, I, I'm not sure I want to come up with suggested language on the spot, but, but in, in, in principle, I agree that there needs to be something specific and not left open. Yes. Okay. I just want to put out there whether you want a, a short instead of having something different for July and August, just extend the, the time a little bit so you can account for July and August. I mean, mm -hmm. and that might also make sense. Yeah, it, it's kind of jarring to me to just see this exception for July and August. There might be memorialized in our Constitution. There, yes, there might very well be a more elegant solution. I'd be glad to think about it and talk with Councilor Dwight or whomever. Yes, that was actually Councilor Klein who uh, raised this. Am I remembering that correctly? Mm, I think it was Pam. Pam? Yeah. Pam raised it? Okay. Yeah, and then uh, Councilor Sharon talked about it. 
it just seemed that, 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 you know, when I was in that position that we bumped up on that quite a bit and uh, yeah. I think that there had been uh, some question about whether or not those time restraints were, you know, could be moved out a little bit to make it a little easier for the council mm -hmm. to fulfill its obligation. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, move and table this uh, until uh, April 16th or the next meeting that Councilor Boyd attends. And that seconded. Oh, I second it. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so that will be back on the agenda on April 16th. So, uh, Dennis, if you have any thoughts in the next couple of weeks, you could. I will. Please, thank you. All right, then the fourth item um, uh, to discuss and vote on tonight is uh, Section 5.2, Trustees Under the Will of Charles E. Forbes. The suggestion is to uh, recommend that the sentence vacancy shall be filled in a like manner as the city clerk vacancy be replaced with in a like manner. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to be replaced with by unanimous vote of the remaining trustees for a temporary appointee to serve until the next municipal election. This removes, well, I guess we should have a motion to uh, consider that change. Second. Okay. This would uh, remove the city council from the process. Uh, and it would, it would, it would, uh, it would put in place a mechanism that the trustees had hoped to use over the past uh, several decades. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, that Russ Curious said there had been three vacancies that had not been filled because of the lack of clarity about the library vis-a-vis -vis the city. Um, so this is this is a suggestion that was made by the by the library trustees and uh, the library's executive director. Discussion. I'd just like to state for the record that I'm recusing myself from this. Discussion. Employee of the library. Okay. Alan, any, any uh, thoughts on this? I'm loath to. Uh, to jump into another library <laughs> issue. <laughs> um, I don't have a strong view on this. I really, you know. You don't? I don't. Okay. Anybody else? All right, I want to roll call on this. Uh, the uh, affirmative vote would recommend. Sorry, can I just ask a clarifying yes. question? Uh, so, will we retain the language that the um, the person that the, the trustees elect to a temporary as uh, a temporary appointment would we retain the language that they could not have the words candidate for re-election, or um, would we let that happen? Um, that is the practice with other temporary appointments to to fill a vacancy in other boards, uh, uh, like school committees, right? That they would not have. Yes. Yes, correct. Um, I think so. uh, that seems like that would make sense if they were elected, right? If that's the plan, right. putting that in there. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to find uh, where where is that? Where the is the school uh, committee, right? The um, it's, in, it's right. there. It's in the city council, and it's also in city clerk five dash two, a uh, five dash one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And then yes, I see five that. two says in a like manner as city clerk. So I would think that that would apply. <coughs> yes. So the question that Lynn raises is. Uh, uh, would we add the wording uh, person? Actually, the last two sentences. <coughs> what about uh, 
No vacancy shall be filled under the section if a regular city election is to be held within 120 days following the date of the vacancy. Mm -hmm. That should also be amended. Yes. Okay. All right. So, if everyone, if you look at uh, the wording right above Section 5.2, the trustees under the will of Charles E. Coors, this is uh, under the city clerk filling a vacancy. The proposal then is to add the last two sentences of Section E. No vacancy shall be filled under this section if a regular city election is to be held within 120 days following the date of the vacancy. A person, ser person serving the city as, uh, trustee. as trustee of Forbes Library under this section shall not be entitled to have the words candidate for re-election printed next to that person's name on the election ballot. That, that is consistent with the manner in which other similar uh, <coughs> are handled. Is that clear to everyone what we're voting on? Any of you like that? Do we need to add any language about that they would be taken off this immediately? some ways the library is part of the city, in some ways it's not part of the mm -hmm. city. And it's part of our charter, it's elected, and then the charter establishes the procedures by which government is, is, is formed. And this is part of the, govern, the governing bodies of the city. So yes, the charter deals with, and, and um, deals with the trustees of the Forbes Library now, and it can deal with those issues as well. There's no, there's no prohibition against um, against requiring that the replacement or the vacancy be filled within 30 days. Okay. So Is there any prohibition on who can serve as a trustee? <laughs> if you read the will, you'll know why I'm laughing. <laughs> because the will itself basically was the most virulent anti-Catholic document we've ever said. And Catholic clergy were prohibited from serving on the, on the, as a trustee. And that was taken out of the will some years ago by the probate court, but it's worth a read. <laughs> it's worth a read. Like two pages of, of just absolute those virulent and Catholic bigotry you've ever heard. Um, so anyway. Can you see counsel to serve as trustee the matter? <coughs> I don't know the answer to that question. Probably not, because I don't think the city council can hold any other positions in the city under Article Two of the Charter. So does it need to be said or not? No. Okay. So the um, the uh, proposed change now is this: vacancies sh shall be filled within 30 days following the date of that vacancy by unanimous vote of the remaining trustees for a temporary appointee to serve until the next municipal election. And then pick up with the, with the two sentences uh, in, in subsection E of 5-1. A no vacancy shall be filled, etc., down to uh, that person's name on the election ballot. We read the sentence above that as well. Person elected at that such regular sitting election should take office immediately? Right, so instead of waiting till January when everyone else is yeah. sworn in, that person takes the office immediately because 
there was a, a temporary fill in. Yeah. As soon as the election happens, that person goes away okay. and a new person takes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Is that clear to everybody? Okay. So I, I have a clarifying yes. question. And I called Sam asking about this, but I've not read the, the will for the trustees for the library. And with every other vacancy, it's in you know conjunction with elected officials, right? Because these are elected positions and like city council is stepping in saying we're gonna appoint this person, we're elected, right? But if we're electing Forbes trustees, why is it not being why why do they not consult with other elected officials? Well they are elected officials. Okay. But I but, just, I see what you're saying. It was too yeah, like, like I mean, like, so the like committee when the school right. committee, yeah, yeah, like they join with the city council. Yeah. Essentially, like the city council is being the city's voice, mm -hmm. right? So that's the one thing that confuses me with the Forbes. Well, board. I think the Forbes want this because they're trying to assert their independence from the city, even though they're on the city election ballot. They right. want and to assert their independence. That's right. what confuses me right. the most. Like it seems like, yeah. So if well, you wanted to treat it more like <coughs> the school committee and just took out school committee and said trustees of Forbes Library. Yeah. And, and I think that the trustees of Forbes and the school committee are analogous in some ways because they are, um, you know, the school committee oversees the school department, trustees oversee the library, and yet when the, the school committee has a vacancy, the city council is involved. Um, but I think Forbes is trying to, as I said, you know, sort of it's exert its independence. And it's in the will that they are elected by right? the city. Yes, there's also a statute on it. It's, it's a very, very confused mess. Yeah. And, you know, there are a number of these institutions in the city that back in the 19th century, very wealthy people thought it would be a good idea to create these institutions of the city and then put trustees who are, uh, you know, have them controlled by the trustees as opposed to being controlled by the city itself. Of course, there was a town back then, but, um, you know, Smith Volk is another example. Yeah. Uh, so, to be a trustee, do you have to be, well, now you would, but if the trustees were to elect somebody or appoint someone to fill it temporarily, we, we're losing the language about them being a uh, voter or a qualified voter. So they could appoint someone that's not a resident. If we were to follow the school committee mm -hmm. language, it says that they have to be a, um, a voter entitled to vote for the office.
not a part of the city is an inexact phrase, okay? because they are a part of the city. They are the city's library. They are elected officials of the city of Northampton. And right now, we're not talking about the the day-to-day the -day control of the library, which is com clearly under the, you know, the jurisdiction of the trustees. Right now, we're talking about filling a vacancy in a governmental position, okay? and that's what the charter is about. So this charter, because they're on the city's ballot, this charter can decide exactly how that structure is going to be created and so um, so to say that they're not part of the city is not exactly accurate they, their their operations are they, they operate outside of the city government mm -hmm. okay. um, you know the city provides probably 90 percent of its budget out of tax money so to say they're not part of the city is is not exactly accurate they are operated outside of the city government so, I mean, go ahead, Bob. As a quasi authority, let's say, I mean, they're not called that, but they act in a similar right. fashion. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, the, the mayor has no control over the library right. at all, um, the trustees do. But how the trustees get elected is all part of our charter. Mm -hmm. How they, the, the, how the, issue, the issue is, uh, do we leave it up to the city council, which is the way a vacancy would be filled under the current charter? Do we make the change to uh, to the language that was suggested by the, the, the library uh, trustees and the director, so it's up to the remaining trustees? Or do we handle it in a, in a, in a kind of a compromised way, similar to a school committee vacancy, where you have the remaining trustees and the city council meet together to to um, elect someone to fill that vacancy. Basically, we're just facilitating an action to get us to the next election, right? Yes. Assuming it's more than 120 days away. Yes. Right. So why don't we why don't we let them do what they want to do as long as they're <coughs> appointing someone who's a registered voter? Like, like, I'm not opposed to what they want to do. I just, I like consistency and I, I'm confused as to why they get an insular way to appoint someone when the other elected official vacancies don't, right? Like, so the options that it is right now, it's either the city council does it by themselves or the city council consults with the remaining committee or board or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but like the city I, council doesn't consult on who's going to be the next trustee in an elected sense. So we're just getting them to the next election. Yeah, but the way I understood it in reading it is that, oh, because we're not going to hold an election, the city councilors are representing the voters, right? Like when they're consulting with the trustees. That's how I understood the way the vacancies are filled. So, I mean, I guess it, to me, it's giving more of a voice to the, the people who vote. But I just would point out that the tr the trustees are also yes. elected officials. I mean, so I get yeah. And I think I don't want to speak for you, but I think what you're getting at is that the school committee is an elected body, but they can't fill it amongst themselves either. Yeah. They have to have city council to do that. And so why would we treat Forbes entirely different than? the way we treat the school committee, if it's a, about an elected body. And we did vote to recommend the change for the Smith vote to be able to fill their like, school committee. Right. So it's not, because before it was only city council doing it, and now it's city council with the remaining, what, do you, what are they called, superintendents or trustees? Both. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> so, you know, it's, yeah. Okay, well, I'm sensing some uh, some some concern about treating Ford Library differently than other city elected bodies. Yeah. Okay. That, and I'm not saying this because I'm like I just I don't fully understand the whole scope of 
what the big issue was before, mm -hmm. so I don't say it in an insulting way, like, you guys don't get what you want to do, but. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody else want to speak to this, Robbie? I mean, I'm, I'm leaning towards what you characterize as a compromise, which is, it's built from within, and it's, uh, it's filled by the trustees if it's within 120 days. No. Saying that it's outside. No. And then well, no, it wouldn't be filled by anybody if it's within 120 days. It would just it would just remain vacant until the next election. Election. Right. So yes. if it's more than that, the compromise would be to have the vacancy filled in a similar way as the school committee or Smith school trustees to have the remaining Forbes trustees meet with the city council to elect a. A fill in. Yeah, it would be a compromise. I have, you know, I wonder if that would actually happen. But I wonder if it would actually happen, honestly. But it, am I making sense? Yeah. Yep. I mean, I also don't know enough about the history to understand why it didn't, why they didn't follow the charter. I don't know when the when the vacancies were. Yeah. I vaguely recall they said they haven't had one under this new charter. Right. Oh, okay. And if it's under okay. the old charter, so then, then it's a okay. completely different bargain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For the past 38 years, there have been three vacancies. Right. That's what. Right. That's what Russ Curie yeah. said. And, and it's correct, none of them have occurred since this new charter was adopted. Yeah. So it was, it was back in the dark ages when the murkiness was Yes. <laughs> Molly, any thoughts? I don't have any additional thoughts. Okay. All right. So right now the motion is to um, to adopt the suggestion of the Forbes trustees and director that it be uh, that it be up to the trustees, the remaining trustees, to uh, fill a vacancy with all the additional sentences that we have pulled from um, Section 5.1 uh, City Clerk filling of the vacancy. Uh, now would be the time if someone wants to offer an amendment to that, uh, to hear that amendment. I mean, I'd like to amend it but I also think that I'd like to know what their thoughts are on that before we okay. vote on the recommendation. So, um, then uh, I think it would be appropriate to table this one as well. Okay. Can I make that motion? We move to table this. Yes. Yeah. Until we get more info. Okay. a second? Mm -hmm. Okay. No need to roll call on this, but uh, those in favor of tabling this, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, Yes, it was one abstention. Yes, it was one abstention. She did ask for Yes, yes. Okay. Dylan abstained. But we didn't invite them back. Yes. That's yes. And when would we, we would just discuss this at the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Assuming that um, someone can represent the library. Mm -hmm. Yes. The next regular meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, wording changes that, um, that, um, that Lynn will speak to. Not, this is for information tonight, not a vote, because we're not on the original agenda. Those are the last two on the uh, attached document to the email that we got today, section C3 and section C6. Lynn, if you want. So I have gone through the charter since the last meeting, and I think I have the Or just adding them here, and I think we fixed it in the other one already. 
in the budget um, seven, was it seven last year? Yes. It would be considered consistent and probably easiest simply to insert the language the superintendent of Smith's agricultural school. Right. Okay. If, if I may, I would concur with that because somebody's looking and seeing the word school committee is not going to go looking for a definition of school committee because mm -hmm. we all think we know what a school committee mm -hmm. is. Okay. All right. Then section 3-6. So 3-6 was a Another review, just of um, the things in the charter that maybe didn't line up with what how things are done. Uh, so it would be striking the word resolution um, because the mayor would does not would not veto a council resolution because it's generally the opinion of the council. Uh, and then striking the word memorial and adding non-binding resolutions are not binding and um, the selection, striking the word selection and adding confirmation of city officers by the city council because they don't um, necessarily select in the way that we would think that word would be used. Um, they confirm city officers before it. Does anybody have any questions? For Lynn about either of those two sections, 3336, the proposed changes. Everybody understand what that is. Incidentally, what, this is just sort of self explanatory by non binding. The opposite of non binding is a memorial. What is a memorial mm -hmm. resolution? <laughs> That's why we're striking it. Okay. <laughs> don't know what a memorial okay. resolution is, but it is certainly not the opposite of non-binding. Okay. That is not true. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, so those two items which seem like relatively simple housekeeping, uh, but, but then again, you know, things that seem simple may not always be simple. <laughs> um, we'll put those on the agenda for uh, further discussion and votes on uh, April 16th. Okay. Uh, Dylan has told me that he has to live at 7 30. So, my apologies. Not because he's upset with our not getting the action on the fourth line at all. Did you get it? All right, so the next uh, item on the agenda is to discuss. I, I selected six of the issues that were raised by either residents or city officials who addressed us on March 19th. Uh, my intent here is, is that we not, certainly not reach any decision on, on these issues other than to sort of take the temperature of the committee to determine if there are any of these that we, that we should uh, definitely consider or any of these that we feel that really because of the time constraint. I mean, we have nine very talented people on this committee, but we also have only nine months to finish our work. Uh, so if there are any of these that you feel that they're, they're not something that we want to take up. Um, are there any that don't year? fall under our purview? Or, or, or they could be issues that Allen feels aren't, aren't um, really appropriate for us to deal with. Um, so we'll just take these one at a time and it, before you yes. before you do that, I, I, I just want to point out just a, uh, a logistical issue. Okay? Um, when you're thinking about what you're going to talk about, remember that you need the mayor's signature on this. Yes. Nothing happens without the mayor's signature. So, I mean, if you're talking about the eliminating the mayor yes. as a, a functioning mayor, I would suggest you not spend too much time on that. Yes. Um, since he expressed his view last time. Yes, he did express his view. Um, not surprisingly, he favors a mayoral form of government. A strong mayoral form of government. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's a point well taken, Alan, that um, we need to remember that we are only a, a body that recommends changes. Uh, this needs to get through the city council and then does need the uh, approval of the mayor to even get to the state legislature. What? would be the process, not that I'm promoting it for any reason, I have no reason to, but what would be the process for changing um, 
mayor with city ma with city manager. If he's veto, if he's sort of signing off on. It. Well, then you have to have a charter commission elected, and go through the charter commission process. The and uh, without the mayor's signature, the legislature couldn't change this, the charter. Mm -hmm. But there is a process called the charter commission, which is. Uh, not this process. Not this process. It's a much more formal and lengthy process. It's usually about a 18 month process. First you have an election to determine whether to form a charter committee commission and at that same election elect charter commissioners just in case the charter commission is established we have commissioners. Um, so, um, so you're going to have a whole campaign for charter commissioners and then you're going to have an election about that, and then after that, it's at least a year process while the Charter Commission holds public hearings and does all these other things. Amherst just did that. Amherst did that, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how Amherst ended up with the city form of government with a city, a town manager. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, 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 the request, as is reflected in the minutes from the last meeting, was that that we release in our report uh, of recommendations the uh, pros and the cons for both forms of government and the reasons why we prefer one over the other. Uh, so my question to you uh, is whether you think this is uh, worth spending our time on. Bob. Um, it occurs to me, in reflecting on what Councillor Klein said last time, and what Councilor Bidwell said this time, that ex existing mechanisms can address the kinds of issues that they brought forward. With regard to legislative executive, with regard to strong mayor, weak mayor, and in particular with regard to the budget process and the council not feeling that it's having an opportunity to, re to put their input in, you know, um, it seems to me that if existing mechanisms were used, those a lot of those things would go away. For example, the city is required to do a five-year financial forecast. The city is required to do a five-year capital improvement plan. Those are policy opportunities for the council to participate and say, this is what we want to see going forward. That's our legislative involvement. Um, the annual budget setting process you know, there's lots of ways to do budgets from top down to bottom up, but the opportunity for the finance committee of the council to have its input as the mayor sends out budget directives can give them the opportunity to feel like they're participating. So to me, it seems that rather than this group going through a very rigorous effort of defining a new form of government, which we are going to mayor will not sign off on, perhaps a suggestion as to ways that these problematic <coughs> circumstances that the counselors have brought forward, like the need for an ombudsman, mm -hmm. you know. <coughs> it is my sense that these things can be dealt with with existing mechanisms and that we don't have to reinvent a form of government to, to treat them. That would be my, that would be my sense. You're, you're addressing the concern of some counselors that that the mayor, the, the form of government in Northampton may be too much a strong mayor, and that the city council would like to have some additional um, power. I'm, I'm addressing my experience in the several different cases where someone gets all the publicity and the people who are elected who don't complain. Mm -hmm. And that's just a natural, that's just the way things happen, you know. If, if, you're, if you're expressing that complaint in the manner that we're not getting an opportunity to provide our input, then you need to look for opportunities to provide your input. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I seem a little exercise, it's because every year I would lead two major planning things, which would be capital improvement, mm -hmm. bonding, and financial forecasts. And these are big things, you know, it's your annual big financial thing and then you have a public meeting, you advertise it, and nobody, including counselors, shows up. So it's like, you know, you can't have it both ways. You want your input, we give you an opportunity for input. 
on a policy making way and in fact we're not doing top-down budgeting we're doing bottom-up budgeting and we're giving you an opportunity to comment on what you want to see going forward and you don't comment and at the end you complain so you can't and I'm not saying that's going on here I'm just saying that's kind of a common phenomenon and existing mechanisms both statutoral and in the ordinance as to how the government works can deal with that mm -hmm. Can I just ask a point of clarification? What what does this specifically relate to here on this? What are we talking about on here? Just in general, are we talking about a discussion of issues raised by residents and city officials specifically? Uh, I, yes, I, okay. I am bringing to the committee um, uh, six uh, issues that I heard uh, two weeks ago, and I'm looking for kind of take the temperature of the committee. Mm. Um, uh, yes, this is something that we want to spend time on. No, we definitely don't want to spend time on this. Or, Alan, what do you think? Is this within our purview? So that we can uh, chart a course. I mean, we don't have an indefinite amount of time. Oh, absolutely, I agree. I just, um, the conversation around sort of the balance of power between the executive and legislative, I just wondered, is that sort of around a conversation around replacing mayor with the city manager? Sounds like no. Um, but is it around any specific? Well, I'll let Bob yeah. clarify that. I mean, there, there was the, 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 the public, the two gentlemen who spoke first, brought up a case of if we lose, yeah. you know, the mayor. And look what happened in Amherst, Hadley, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, now our mayor, happens to believe that that's the opportunity for the public to express right. their desires. Now, you know, there's pluses and minuses on both sides of that, but the fact of the matter is, is that the former government that's been here has worked admirably well in a lot of key ways. Mm -hmm. I can't comment on how the, the basic citizenry feel about transparency and all the rest, but you sure are secure, and you sure are able to get stuff done and it certainly seems to me like there's abundant opportunity for people to come forward and express their opinions and they're being heard so you know that to me is big stuff mm -hmm. right so it doesn't suggest that you have a systematic or endemic problem that needs to be cured through a different form of government the, you've been fortunate to have a couple of good mayors back to back to back to back you know and uh, and, uh, and, and, and some talented counselors, clearly. So, um, uh, all right, did, yes, yeah. I, I just, I, I wanna say that I think that when, um, after the charter was ratified and, and counselors started taking their positions, I think they were surprised by what it meant to, to have a strong mayor form of government. And, um, you know, I, I guess the, uh, I guess the, important way to look at it from the mayor's point of view anyway is that you can't have ten bosses roaming around City Hall. Okay? You can only have one. And, um, and that becomes a problem uh, in, in, um, in weak mayor forms of government. And um, so... But what I heard, I mean it wasn't just necessarily the input as Dennis Bidwell brought up here, I also heard City Councilor Klein speak more on the piece around communication and visibility, and she cited this sort of example of having a new business opportunity open in a specific ward and having the option of being invited. And it, I sort of agree with you on the one sense, why do we need to add more bureaucracy to sort of solve a what sounds like a communication problem, but I clearly need to dig deeper and understand what exactly is the issue that there cannot be a conversation between mayor and city councilor so that everybody is apprised of things that are going on in a ward, for example. I can't speak to the budget process specifically, but do you understand what I'm sort of sharing? I certainly do, but you know, it's, again, I'm familiar. And in general, I'm agreeing with you. I'm not sure why we would need to add that, but I may not be understanding you know, fully. You, you, you know, you both are, were thinking or are thinking about running as district councilors. Well, how are you going to feel if you get co-opted by an at-large counselor because they get a lot more action than district counselors do? This is just 
part and parcel of the form of government. And you, you know, you need to you need to have a relationship with the mayor's office where everything flows through that you're included. You just have to insist on it. You know, and it's not. So just to be clear, on this, on this point of, of I mean, replacing the mayor with a city manager would be a huge change in how he's working at this government. <laughs> this is not, this is not uh, a, you know, a, right. A small fact. <laughs> Um, and, and, and to be clear on, on this was the, the request of two residents, Fred Zinnick and uh, Mike Kirby, Mike Kirby being a former city councilor. This is not suggested by any of the public Client officials well. who spoke yeah. uh, either uh, two weeks ago or tonight. So again, Mike, on this specific item, this specific issue is, does anybody feel that we should spend our time on looking at the pros and cons of city manager versus a strong mayor form of government? No. Okay. No. All right. Good. That, that answers that question. The mayor would be very, very <laughs> that's, just, that's just why I asked. I wasn't sure if the concerns that were being lifted up were under the umbrella of, and this is why we want to have a city manager. So that's why I just wanted to clarify if that's whatsoever you can test it there <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so uh, the next uh, issue that um, that uh, I want to hear from the committee on is the we, we have looked at some wording changes to section 36 approval of, of mayor uh, uh, it was it was the question was raised, I, I guess that's the way I would phrase it, by one of the counselors who spoke, whether the mayor should have any veto power at all. Thoughts on this? So, the, I think it's fine as is, and the only thing I would entertain would be um, what we had talked about, about the resolutions. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts about the, the, looking at totally eliminating Mayor's veto? The, I'm not really sure. I mean, I've never even thought about eliminating the veto. That would mean that anything the city council did, the mayor would go into effect because either the mayor is going to sign sign it, or you know, the time is going to pass and it's going to go in. I, mean, I, I haven't researched this, but I'm going to suggest to you that this is not legally permissible to allow a city council to just adopt whatever it, it adopts and with with no check and balance from the executive. Mm -hmm. Anybody feel strongly enough that we want to have Alan do further research on this? No. Okay. No, I'm not All right. Where did this one come from? I was, I was, Councilor Klein was among the uh, number of issues that she raised, again, in terms of the balance of power. But, okay. uh, I, I, too, feel strongly that uh, veto power is, is um, a well-accepted uh, form of, of check and balance, and I think she does spend any time. There's that the, memorial resolution. <laughs> All right, so the next issue that was raised is the question about term limits for elected positions. Uh, could do it. It's, it's definitely within the authority of a charter. Um, the, the, the most frequent response to that is we already have term limits. They're called elections. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, I think it's This was extensively debated when this charter was adopted. Mm -hmm. That and recall, I'm, su I'm surprised that nobody brought up recall, but those two things were debated extensively before this was. The term limits or the three year term? Term limits. Term limits. Please remind me to bring up the term limits. And what, were, what was she sort of citing as? Concepts that sort of made terms in the mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. 
She didn't. I, I believe I asked her if she had a specific uh, term limit in mind, and she did not. Was it around the conversation? Um, no, that was more around. There was a conversation around staggering, and then there was a conversation. Like, um, like term length. Yeah. Versus limits. Yeah. yeah. Which is the next item. Does anybody feel strongly that term limits is, is a, a, a concept that we want to spend time researching? And I guess I need to understand what, what the concern is, like, and here's sort of an example of, here is an example of why term limits are not great, are not helpful. Um, I want to do some research on places that had it, had term limits. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. what? Their experience was. I, just, right. I don't. I just don't. Right. I don't feel like I know enough pros and cons. Well, I mean, in general, the concept of term limits um, encourages turnover um, and, and, and discourages um, you know people sort of serving indefinitely. But the argument that Alan points out is that uh, elections are a form of with it, so. I, I, so again, the question, I mean, yes, we, more research would be needed on, on, on this issue, on this concept, um, certainly, but it's a question of, again, our priorities in terms of spending our time. So mm -hmm. if this is something that interests people, that you think it's, it's worth, you know, worth doing some research, then, then say that. But otherwise, um, you know, it's, not something we're going to spend any more time on. Well, with that, Stan. <laughs> um. uh, well, I'm okay not spending any more time on it. And I, I, I will point out, I just think, just the other thing that comes to mind with term limits is that people are loath to run against incumbents. Um, mm -hmm. It feels like a check, so there's an interesting conversation to be had around sort of the checks and balances. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I'm comfortable enough to just say we don't have time on this, mm -hmm. we should go with it, this is, you know, elections, our term limits, et cetera, just to say, oh, okay, and sort of feel that pressure and make decision to go forward. Um, so what's the, the next option is, I mean, can we sort of consider by next session whether just lift it up again? And in the meantime, sort of do some research or thinking about it. Well, What's the process? Alan says that there was extensive debate about term limits. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking, is it possible to read? You know, there's look into that. How does public read? <laughs> and are they all the things that we've just mentioned here? I, would I mean, there are, you know, there are those who feel that, you know, that councils who've been on the council for a long time have experience in, you know, their. They, they're they're better counselors. The pros, yeah, the pros. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's you know the the turnover turnover that you know this is not intended to be a lifelong endeavor. This is you know represent your community and then move on and let somebody else step up. Okay, so I'm going to suggest then that on this one that we see if we can uh, come up with any documents that capture the the arguments. Probably could, and I, we may. I know that my committee went into this in some detail also. I don't know if there are any records. There must be records of that. Yeah. And that we um, review and then sort of decide. Yeah, with the that, that we'll is, that, is, that, is that okay for you? Okay. 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 We'll, I think we're comfortable with that. that. Yes, okay. So we'll, 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 we'll look for um, records. We need a new charter. Uh, That's you know, exists from the previous charter committee. Yep. I'm and imagining we'll, Lynn and the bowels <laughs> of some. <laughs> um, and I'll try to get those in advance of the next meeting so yes. that we can have a conversation. Yes. And then if we wanted to, I'm presuming we could add this to the public forum. Is it about yeah. election? Yes. Election? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, uh, separate from term limits is a suggestion that. Uh, that city council and school committee terms be changed from two to three years, and that um, the election of set of, of those uh, board's members be on a staggered 
schedule so there wouldn't be uh, turnover every, uh, the potential for turnover every election. And at one point, we had staggered elections, mm -hmm. right? Or at least for school committee? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? And so, like, I'm... I mean, I'm personally interested in that just because I sometimes think, like, wow, that could be really detrimental if everyone was wiped out. But I could also that could also be a positive thing, right? I'm, I mean, I'm, it just yeah. depends, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm interested in that with the awareness that this has happened before, so it would be good to reflect on the, why that was changed. Just on the three-year terms, city elections are every two years on the, in the odd year. Am I right about that? Every two years in the odd year, okay? I don't have a problem with staggering. Yeah. But yeah. every two years, odd year, okay? Mm -hmm. There's no three-year city election. But could there and then be a four-year term? And, and I, one more thing. If we're going to get any city issues on the, at the state election, we're going to have to have two ballots. We're going to have to have the city ballot and the state ballot. The, ballot. the state won't allow us to put our city questions on the state ballot, that happened once before, correct? I think it was a, that was a question of timing. But that was, was it? Yes, it okay. was a question of timing. I remember one time we had to have two ballots because... Yeah. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get it to the state soon enough so that they would add it to the ballot. I the stand corrected ballot. by... Our, our but, but I will tell you that you'll, you'll have my resignation tomorrow morning <laughs> if you decide to have municipal and state and presidential elections in the same year when that does Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three-year terms, I'm going to say, is, is probably out of bounds here. The point, the point is that a three-year term is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, and the spirit behind the three was that experience. it's you build experience, but four, for some reason, was too long. Mm. But... Is there some other way to address the experience piece without? Because I mean, I thought that was compelling. I've heard, like, just from various elected people, like, that the first term is hard, and mm -hmm. two years isn't always long enough. So I, I get that. I guess I don't fully think that four years is too long. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. I mean, could that, would four years also mess up? No, well, that, no. that wouldn't mess the, up the, the mayor. In orders. fact, the, the irony of it all is that we don't have, I, in the 11 years that I've been involved in with the city government, we haven't had um, one person just run one term for two years. Huh. So, you know, we yeah. yeah. mm. continue to want those. <laughs> yeah. want, want to be involved. It's only so too long if it's a president. It is the case that every elected official that I've known that's had to run two years, it's like they're always running. Mm -hmm. right. And that's real. I mean, that's a real phenomenon. But that's the job. You, you can't argue for term limits on one side and against two years on the other because a two-year election cycle gives the community an opportunity, a quick opportunity, to grade you. you yeah. know? So yeah. I'm sorry, but if you, if you want to be a counselor, you just got to keep your yard signs. And when you make them up. <laughs> don't put dates on them. Yeah, don't put dates on them. You do still have one elected position in the community um, that, staggered, that has staggered terms, and that's the Community Preservation Mm -hmm. And those terms are how long? They're four years, but yep. three people serve for, you know, are up for election this year, and in two years' time, the other two will be up for election. Yep. Okay, so then there is interest in this concept, but it would not be changing the terms to three years. It would be looking at going to a four-year term mm -hmm. and, and the possibility of staggering. So we'll, we'll leave that one on, on our agenda <coughs> for further discussion at some point. Okay, so the next one is a um, suggestion that uh, there be an independent ombudsperson who would respond to citizen complaints and would be appointed by, well, could be appointed by the mayor with the approval of the city council. I'm not sure that that, um, that mechanism was actually 
discussed. I think this was another uh, suggestion by Councilor Klein. Is that something, Alan, do you think um, could be put into the charter? Is that a, a more sort of uh, granular kind of? You know, most of um, not a multi-member board. Could, I, I don't see why it couldn't be put in the charter. Um, Was there concern that you looked it up last time around the real sort of neutrality that this person could potentially have? And either they're kind of partisan to the executive branch or partisan to the legislative branch. branch. And so I've, I, seen, it, I've, seen, it, I've seen it not work. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I'm not saying that as a reason not to talk about it, but. Did, I can't remember. Did Councillor Klein bring it up because, like, say that like her job, like councillors are part time. Mm. Was that part of the? I, I just don't know. Uh, I don't think it was part of maybe that discussion. Oh, maybe it was. I personally feel like there's plenty of people. Well, it, it seems. Let me. I mean, it seems to me. How do you, how do you you know how do you view the role of the city council? I like how you keep looking at me for this. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> encouraging you to to expound upon your platform. Um, it, Which it appeared, platform would that well, be? Well, if you were to run for city councilor, do you view constituent service as part of your job? It seems to me a lot of the councilors that I've heard from in this city view that mm -hmm. to be the essential part of their job. Right. Yeah. And if constituent services is the essential duty of a district councilor, why do you need an ombuds person? Which is yeah. essentially what Councilor Klein was saying, that that she felt that that grievances that that citizens had were not reaching the mayor's office. Well, there's a fundamental yeah. difference between advocacy <laughs> and an ombuds person. A ombuds person isn't taking theoretically a position. And you could argue that a city councilor is advocating on behalf of its constituents. So I see a distinction there. I call it problem solving. And, you know, however the problem, you know, the problem should be solved by the person who can best solve it. And, and the city councilor should know who that is. Well, not to, like, not every complaint should go to the mayor's office, right? Like, a, a city councilor theoretically would help point you in the right direction of, like, where you should be solving these issues. I, I personally think that we have people to do that. But mm -hmm. Would this be a paid position? That's not, that's a... I mean, is this a part-time position? Is a, yeah. Or is this just somebody who gallops in when there's a... When there's oh, I like that vision. Yeah. It's on its so course. It's <laughs> <laughs> so she specifically said Lisa City is missing an ombudsman, someone who would take complaints and interact with city residents. person would not be elected as to avoid political motivation. So I guess I don't really completely understand that. Um, Understand so I think it would be your question, you know, why it, why is this role needed as opposed to a city councilor? Why couldn't this a potential conflict be resolved by a city councilor? I don't have the answer to that. Well, I mean, if the it is it, there's a distinction between conflicts with the city and constituent Inter services. Intra, yeah. And you know, for instance, you know, I have uh, you know sewage flowing into my basement. Council's going to, you call the council, they're going to say, call the DPW. <laughs> That's where you, I mean, there's, there's constituent services where, the, where, you know, councilors and the mayor's office is directing citizens to where they go to get the services they need. Now, if there's, I always viewed an Omsbud person as somebody coming in, in conflict. You know, um, there's a conflict between the DPW and some other department, or there's uh, or, some, or a conflict between a citizen and the DPW, the honest person would sort of try to mediate or facilitate or the conversation. Facilitate. Right. Um, I just don't know if, I mean, if, if this is an appointed position, then that person is going to be in the executive department yeah. under the supervision and control of the mayor. Um, you could call this person independent if you want, but that person is not independent. 
he or she would be in the executive department. Indeed. And the other thing that's required in an ombuds position is authority. Right. You, because, you know, you appoint me ombuds person, you don't pay me, I'm a volunteer. What department head's going to listen to me when I, when I call? You know, I mean, it's just a really difficult position right. to be in, particularly when it is solving problems. And was the ombuds person sort of in Councillor Klein's mind, was the audience constituents or was the audience different from constituents? Do you remember? We take complaints and interact with students. Okay. So if you're not even saying conflict, you're saying conflict. Yeah. Okay. My road is full of potholes. My road should be the one that is fixed this season. Call the ombudsperson. Call an ombudsperson and the DPW is going to say thank you, but here's the, here's the plan. Here's the, yeah. It's two weeks later and the big tree that came down and the blow is still chopped up on my sidewalk, which you just installed for me. You told me a month ago it was going to be, but it hasn't been blah, blah, blah. Um, what I'm hearing is that um, there's no clear sense for what what purpose this or authority this person would, would have that is is not already uh, that, 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 that the city councilors um, and um, other city officials um, are you know, are <coughs> already in a position to, to, to handle these kind of conflicts. Is that is that mm -hmm. fair? That, that what it would add to the situation. I mean, that, that, right. Yeah. That's the only, the only follow-up question I would say is, if we have the opportunities, I would like to ask Councillor Klein just to sort of say, what purpose does this person serve that a city councillor doesn't, and just yeah. hear the answer. Um, and maybe the answer sort of confirms this sense that the city councillors should really be playing that role, and there isn't a need for that person, or that there's a piece here that we may be missing. Now, if, if what we're missing according to Council Klein, it could be, and this is, you know, I did mention this the other mm -hmm. time, is that complaints are not being adequately documented. Mm -hmm. And department heads aren't being supervised as to resolution of those complaints. There are mechanisms, you know, that can address that. That can address that. Yeah. You know, the C-clip fixes and, and the automated filing of issues that have resolution with appropriate dissemination to the people who put them in can be effective ways to do that. But again, that's that's an existing thing that should happen. You don't necessarily need to hire somebody to do that. All right, does the committee want to have Councilor Klein return to answer some, some questions? We can't, is it against open meeting law to have one of us follow up? I mean, I'd be happy to do that, but if it is against it, then... No. I mean, I can just, yeah. The committee can't all follow up with her. Yeah, I yeah. simply ask her, ask okay. her that clarifying question and share that information. Right. Are we comfortable then with having Molly uh, talk mm -hmm. to Councilor Klein about these the questions that have been raised and Happy see if we can get some clarifying information and then you can report back to us on April 16th? Sure. Okay. Right. <coughs> and the last item here. Um, Certainly not the least, I'm sure, in Alan's eyes, is the question of... Excuse me for a second. I'll sit over here for a No, I'm out of this. Uh, the question that was raised about um, the city council at times feeling, or at least some councilors, feeling a need to have their own legal counsel when there's a conflict between the council and the mayor. Um, Do other departments or... I don't know, call, have, have their own legal counsel, like the school committee have their own? They have labor counsel. Okay. And, and that's just specific to like, I'm assuming, negotiation. Yeah, personnel issues. Yeah. Okay. Bob, any thoughts on this one? I, you know, I think he ought to be full time for us and nobody else. You know, and for us meaning the, meaning the city of Northampton, the city of Northampton. You know, bring him in, bring him in the house, give him an office, yeah. nice little corner office, and then go. Stay. 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 Stay.
staff. Um, I mean, the, in you, in, in who was it? Somebody, somebody. <laughs> was it, was it? I said that to somebody, and oh, you said it to you, and, and, and because Chelsea, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with Chelsea and I'm familiar with Cambridge, and they both have legal staff. So in Chelsea's case, we have about the same size budget. The city attorney also represents the school department, you know, and um, and, and, and she and we said, well, that's because Chelsea gets sued a lot. Chelsea does not get sued a lot, and maybe it's because we have. Anyway, you know. Well, Bob, what you're suggesting is a full-time uh, attorney. I am who works. For North, for the city of Northampton, okay. and, and would represent um, any any um, matter that comes before yes. the city, yes. um, contracts, claims, etc. Right, and if if for whatever reason a matter became apparent where the council felt there was a conflict using existing rep representation, they could. Um, Request hiring of somebody, sort of a rec recusal type situation. But I'm not I'm not aware of of why this is required. Maybe others are. Around. Uh, I'm sorry. Why? 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 What is required? Why Councilor Klein would make the request that the council feels it needs its own attorney. I I do I don't know I do not know why she's making. Request. I could ask her. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yes, you could. Thanks, Ma. But, but um, she did elaborate on it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so there's no mechanism to call uh, city solicitor. If other attorneys could be made available in case the council doesn't agree with the city solicitor decision base, because the only recourse is for them to go to the attorney general. Yeah, I mean, I think, Bob, it's, it's in those instances where there is a conflict between the, uh, the executive, the mayor's office, and the, and the city, city council. And her point is that, that the city solicitor would have to choose between the, the mayor or the, or the council. And, that, uh, and that, that that would be a reason why uh, a different council, a different a lawyer might be of use to the city council. Well, whether the city attorney is appointed by the mayor or comes in some other fashion, the attorney's job is to cite the law as it relates to matters mm -hmm. before the city. Right? Um, if the council has abundant um, experience to discount the city attorney's rulings as it relates to the law, then that's a whole nother matter. If they're unhappy with the way the decisions are coming down, you know, I mean, there's plenty of cases where, where that happens, but I mean, in, in terms of the conduct of its meetings and the terms of contracting for city businesses, affairs, in terms of um, Rulings that the that the attorney has to give, you know, on the, in real time as things are happening. That's a matter of law. I would suggest that we postpone this conversation until the council representatives here. Mm -hmm. And I also just want to point out that Councillor Klein was not speaking for the entire council when she was here; it was for herself as the Ward Seven councillor. So I I feel like we should wait on this conversation until the city council representatives here. Because this is a matter that would impact the entire council, not just the Ward 7 council. And maybe if that's the case, if she's invited back, we could just have a, a larger conversation around the questions that she may have. Um, uh, I'm, I'm looking here in the charter. Where, where in the charter, is there any provision for city solicitor? It's, it's, it's in the administrative code. Yes. It's, not, it's not in the charter itself. Right. Okay. And prior to that administrative code, 
and Alan, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, it was a selection and appointment by the mayor. Mm -hmm. And the administrative code looped in the city council for confirmation of council before that, that wasn't necessary. So there's more opportunity for council to have a say in the city solicitor selection now than there was. Yes. Yes, the, the city council now must affirm the choice of the mayor to be city solicitor. That doesn't address the right. issue of separate council. Right. Hmm. Five. And do they ratify his contract? Does the council ratify the contract? No, they confirm the appointment. Yeah, but if he's contracted, not appointed. Well, it's subject to appropriation. So it's there's a legal budget. Council could well, you know, if he's either a, he's either a, an exempt employee appointed by the mayor and serves in, at the mayor's pleasure forever, yes. or he's a contracted employee who serves under the term of a contract. So, so I, I, want I am to, appointed by the mayor, and I cannot be appointed for a term longer than the mayor's term. And your contract is not ratified by the council? When the contract is not ratified by the council. My appointment is ratified by the council. Your appointment is? My appointment. And then I strike whatever contract I, I strike. As with all contracts in the city, the mayor contracts. Oh, okay. Is that well, it, it, I think um, you know, the council has an opportunity to weigh in on the appointment. And then if the mayor goes away, there's going to be a new city attorney. I mean, if the mayor is, is diselected. <laughs> the new mayor, if the new mayor is elected. The new mayor <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, Ellen, I understand why you have moved yourself away from the table, but, but we need a legal... Uh, a ruling about whether this is something because the position of city solicitor is is under the administrative code and not in the charter. Is this something that could be be uh, addressed in the charter? I, I, um, I, I, I don't mean to do that. I really can't participate in a matter that affects my financial interests. I just can't. I can't participate in it. I'm sorry. I can't answer. All right, Lynn. You're suggesting that. Um, that we ought to wait until uh, Councilor Dwayne is here to yes. be part of this conversation yes. mm -hmm. before we decide yeah, on this, yeah. whether this is something we want to spend more time on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll delay this until uh, we see Councilor Dwayne again. <clears throat> All right, now you can come back and pay. <laughs> Maybe this commission needs to. <laughs> It's on camera. Well, yeah, but, uh, I, I'm afraid we don't have the budget to uh, hire our own Okay, okay. So just to summarize, um, then, uh, we've decided um, that we're not going to spend any time on uh, items one and two. Uh, we're going to, um, we're going to hopefully discuss again on April 16th the term limit question, subject to getting uh, records from prior uh, the charter committee. Trying to debate on this. Uh, we will spend time on the question of changing the uh, years on school committee and city council terms for two to four on a staggered schedule. Molly is going to talk to Council Klein about the ombudsperson and report to us on April 16th. Um, and do you still want me to do that or are we yes. just having Councilor Klein come here? Well, no, you said you said you. Okay, you, I wasn't sure. Are you talking about Councilor Dwight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, um, and then we're going to delay further uh, uh, pondering of the campus and councils over the council until uh, Councilor Dwight is part of that. Does that mean? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Last item on the agenda is. Uh, the April 30th public forum on election issues, which we have, um, we have uh, discussed, which we discussed uh, two weeks ago, and we have further information about a venue. And yes, we I've confirmed um, the community room at JFK Middle School. Uh, we will make a request for NCTV to broadcast it. 
I have two draft flyers for you all to give feedback on um, or tell me to start over. One is colorful and one is Ooh. just basic black and white. Um, and I just plugged in information based on the last meeting at the bottom on both. This one got cut off a little bit, but I want to keep printing them. You want to pass this yep. around? Okay. And I was hoping we could discuss what the presentations would be because I am still not clear at all on what the format would be for a forum on these topics. Bob, you want to sort of give your sense of what what uh, presentations might look like from your. I can only speak to the ranch of choice voting folks, and, and they, you know, are very professional and experienced, and they do they've done this all over the state. So, were we to give them 15 minutes on the agenda for a presentation, they they would present to us how they feel that we would benefit from ranked choice voting. I've heard a couple of their presentations already, and it's very easy, very understandable, and, and persuasive. They, they represent their position well. Um, you, you might want, you know, if we wanted to have um, questions and answers thereafter, um, that might be good. Um, why well, you know i can suggest that it took east hampton three meetings to deal with the stuff that came up on the first meeting so i think we can anticipate that there will be questions you know and we can anticipate that following this meeting we'll have more things to consider but i think laying the groundwork as to how this thing works and what the advantages are um these folks will do a very credible unbiased job, as they've been doing all across the state. Mm -hmm. when, when you suggest a question and answer period, you mean questions from whom? Audience, I guess. The or public. the public. Yeah. Okay. Now, well, well, that, maybe that's something we want to consider. I don't know how much time, how much time do you want to devote on the agenda to this? The rank choice voting? Yeah. Well, okay. uh, we're talking about a two-hour forum. And we're talking about um, a number of other issues, including uh, lowering the municipal voting age to 16. We're talking about uh, issues that Pam Powers may, uh, may no want to... No excuse voting and other things that she may want to discuss. Um, we've got the question now of, uh, of changing terms of uh, city council and school committee members and staggering their election. So there are you know, perhaps a half dozen or so issues that may take up some time at the yeah. forum. Quite. So, um, I'm thinking half an hour would be a generous allocation of time. To write choice vote. Yeah. And that's including that, that, Q&A. Yeah. So when we set it up so each, each topic gets a presentation and then Q&A and we move to the next topic? Or is it all presentations and then... Well, I, I'm open to whatever uh, the committee thinks would be the most useful use of that, that time, but I think uh, we need to keep in mind that this is um, also for our benefit. I mean, we, we want to hear from advocates, opponents, and the general public uh, on these various issues. So uh, that's, that, that's my, my view on how we primarily want to allocate that time. Well, I know I know that they have a lot of advocacy. They, they can turn out a lot of people to speak yes. to us. Now, whether we want that or not, I do not know. In a half an hour, I don't think we, we want that. I mean, we don't need to hear the same arguments more than once. Exactly, yeah. Um, now, I, I could caution them. I could tell them that that make a presentation, don't stack the speaker's rostrum, and, and we hear what we hear. Alternatively, you, alternatively, you allow them to do a presentation, and we ask the questions. But that doesn't seem right. 
<clears throat> Are we intending as a committee to like also discuss at this forum, or is it right? It's just like we can ask questions, the public can ask yes. questions. Okay. Yes. Well, we certainly can ask questions. Yeah. I don't well, see this. As but I mean, like, we're not going to discuss it amongst ourselves during the forum. No. No. Others uh, on the format. Did you see this working like a town hall? I don't know. Well, that's, I'm, I don't know. I think with a lot of these issues that I, I wouldn't expect the public to do all their research right. first. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's supposed to be informative as well as like getting mm -hmm. feedback. So I think it would be good to have the present, if we're trying to do it all, and have it, all the presentations first mm -hmm. and then questions mm -hmm. as opposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Seems to get all the information out there um, and not get bogged down in one of the issues. That's what I would be concerned about. Can I see the flyers uh, and Thank you. Um, first of all, um, since the city clerk is here, Pam, are you able to attend the April 30th forum? I am. Yep. Okay. Good. All right. So uh, we want to, uh, the city clerk, we, uh, Bob, you're going to take care of inviting advocates for ranked choice voting. And then we have the local representatives. Yeah, and we want to avoid invite the uh, the youth commission to speak to the question of sixteen year old voting in North Are we going to have anybody opposing ranked choice voting, or just giving the advocates? Open? That's what I was trying to think of. Like, yeah. who you, and but then like, is that available for all of these issues too? Right? You, is there a group of people who don't like sixteen? <laughs> no, I bet there will be people. I mean, like my 16 year old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, to be open and present both sides. Like, are there groups for both sides of the Perhaps you would be the appropriate speaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. I'm, I'm the 16 year old. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not certain that there is organized opposition to ranked choice voting that we could. Invite. None, none has emerged or appeared at any of the places I've been. So, so That's we will publicize this, and we will certainly hear from anyone who opposes these. Proposals. They are listed, yeah. Um, but, but in terms of specific invitations, um, I mean, if, if there's no organized opposition, then who, you know, yeah. who do we approach? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, but I look, I, I'm also, uh, are there other groups in the city that we, that, that we should invite who might have um, an opinion about in any of these? So I just want to, I put it on there because I know it came up at the last meeting, but I wanted, I was waiting for Alan to be here um, because I didn't, as I was listening and um, thinking about no excuse voting, I didn't necessarily agree that it was something under the purview of this charter group. Tell and me what you mean by no excuse voting specifically. Well, let's ask Pam to So, so the it. idea would be that, the, that every voter in Northampton or every registered voter would receive a ballot mm -hmm. at home. And um, instead of go going to the polls, they would either send their ballot back or they would drop it off, drop it off at the city clerk's office. Is there an online component to this? There, there could be. I mean, it, you know, I mean. Is it always called no excuse voting or is there another name for it? Um, no, I think there is, there is, um, in Massachusetts it's known as um, the no excuses when they, when yeah. people absentee vote in, for early voting. Okay. Um, but in Washington, I think it is called something else. Yeah. Washington State. Washington the, State does the. Is the one state that you're aware of where it's used? And yes, where yeah. where they where they don't have any. Um, everyone is mailed a ballot in the entire state. And how do they know that the person who the ballot was addressed to actually received it and filled it out? Well, I, well, how do we know it when we absentee vote? Really, when that's the reality of it, we, you know, people sign under the pains and penalties of perjury, and that's the, the reality that, you know, some people are, are willing to live with, I don't, you know, um, 
my goal would be to get closer to 100% mm -hmm. of the registered voters voting. Um, there's a lot of people that can't make it to the polls on election day, including yeah. the elderly. We had thought about sending, you know, absentee ballot requests out to people who are 80, you know, years old and above, but it's a lot of people. And if we're going to, you know, do the postage for, you know, sending out the request, do you want an absentee ballot? Why don't we just send the ballot? Right. You're a proponent of this. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds fun, but we're I, my concern Sorry, is that I don't yeah. know that the city can do this. I think it's mm -hmm. a state law that yeah. needs to be changed. Uh, elections and ballots are covered by the state, mm -hmm. and I don't think that the city council, with approval of the mayor, can do that. For for municipal elections, or and I mean, your you couldn't do early voting for municipal elections. Uh, we could do early voting. It's just that it would be unfunded. And this is a special act of the legislature, so the legislature could do whatever it wants. If the legislature wants to, right. I don't know that they would, but why, why would the legislature in a special act not be able to... Authorize Northampton to... To do... No excuse voting. For particularly a municipal election? I guess they could. Uh, again, I'm not sure that, that the legislature would do it for one community. But, and if they could do it for the state, then they could do it for this for the city. I mean, it may not make sense for, for, for that to happen, but those are the rules. Okay, so. So just so, just so you know, it's going to be on the agenda for the Board of Registrars to discuss, because obviously they're going to want to um, have some feedback as well. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it and see if that's something that they would want to support. But, but you know, my goal as as the city clerk is to get as many people out and get their votes cast and, and <coughs> make it easy on them. Yeah. I mean, today, that's, that's all people are coming to me with is, you know, how can I make it easier for them to get their dog license, vote, you know, get their ballots, whatever, whatever the case may be, so, yeah. Okay, so I think it is something that we can consider. No excuse for it. We can consider it. Let's consider it. Yes. Right. All right. So in terms of an invitation, uh, when I, I think it would be good. Um, can we can we invite um, again city officials who have any uh, thoughts about election related issues to this yeah, yeah. same kind of uh, email list that, that we that we had for the public mm -hmm. officials uh, coming to address us. Yep. And can you just make sure that the youth commission is included in that? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any other suggestions about specific invitations to attend this forum? We will publicize it through um, these flyers. And if the committee is comfortable with my turning this into a press release, I will send it to the various media so that we can get some advance. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so, sorry, just format-wise, um, who's speaking to the election scheduling and no excuse voting? City clerk. Both of those items? I'm sorry about election scheduling. Is that the issue that we raised with the timing of special Is elections? Yeah. They're not specials, but... Well, I think that's what, um, that's what Lynn right. had in mind when she put election scheduling on the fly. Yeah, it, um, I think, was it you or... Uh, Councillor Shiara that's mentioned it during public comment the last meeting. So the, so the time frame for certifying. This, this comes oh. this comes up when we have elections. Right. Like like for vacancies. this municipal well not just to fill vacancies but for this municipal election I have three days to certify the election results after the preliminary before I have to get you know, geared up for the November election before we start with, you know, mm -hmm. required activities for the November election. So, the, and we had this issue when it came up for special right. elections around how many days prior to the election do we have to have the preliminary. And this is all contingent upon the preliminary. If we don't have a preliminary, then, then we don't have any timing issues. But if we do have a preliminary, that's when we run into, into, 
a crunch time around the, the dates and how they fall into an election calendar. And this was when you're talking about like the big window of polling papers too, right? Like we have, April we, yeah, we, 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 you know, to pull papers, you know, we start April 2nd, yeah. we're not due until July 19th. Yeah. And back to the city clerk by August. Wow. Because it's what, like August 45 second. days before the election? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a date. Yep. yep. And I, yeah, by the way, if you're interested, the election calendar is up on the city clerk's website. So, so I would expect the city clerk to address those kind of scheduling issues. Um, uh, you, I, you know, I'm not, I mean, is that something that really should be addressed? You know, well, I think the, the PM, you made the point at the last uh, meeting that the one reason for adopting no excuse voting is to that would give you, uh, that would loosen some of the, the, the tight restrictions on the mm -hmm. scheduling of the preliminary election. I don't know about the scheduling piece of it. That wouldn't really help the scheduling piece of it, but it would help the planning piece of it from, from a city clerk perspective. I mean, mm -hmm. I would, I mean, if we, if we, you know, sort of adopted this, you know, this approach where we send out ballots to everyone and we get them back in, I mean, if, if, we still stick with the same time restraints on, you know, it has to be so many days before the, um, the preliminary has to be so many days before the, um, the general municipal election, then, um, you know, those, those are sort of technical terms that really, you know, are only an issue from a planning perspective, mm -hmm. not so much that we would be changing any policy associated with elections. I, I you know, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there because certainly, you know, to sort of, sort of understand it is, is really just to look at the calendar and see how the calendar falls mm -hmm. more so than, I mean, I'm happy to present it if you want me to. Well, but, but absent some alternate form of voting, that might relieve some of the planning pressure. The dates are are in the charter. I mean, the time frame. That's what I'm talking about. Is that you so, know, look at. I mean. So we, so we. I mean, it might help to modify some of those dates. That's what. Yes. That right. and and that's the subject we're talking about. Right. Yeah. I mean, does that that's need to be discussed at this forum that you're having? That's open to the public. I mean, yeah. Is that, is that something that's? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think it needs to be dealt with in any at any great length, but I think that it's it's helpful in terms of, the, of understanding the context of, of this to, to just make it clear that there are some uh, some tight deadlines that might might be loosened by you know by changing some of those dates. But it also might be uh, we talked about for instance ranked choice voting as a substitute for the preliminary. Yeah. And so, you know, the sort of the, the tight deadlines are sort of like the entree into the discussion of ranked choice voting because yeah. it's, a, it's a possible solution. Among well, other, then I'll go first. That should be your. You should have. A, you know, you should have a, a, a choice or a, vo a voice in that. I mean, you could present this as an alternative to rank choice voting. Or you could start off and say, you know, I, I mean, because I know what they're going to say. I mean, I know what they do say. And, and they're going to say that ranked choice voting is a way to solve the preliminary problem and save money to boot. And, you know, if that's true, it's true. You know, if you have a position that, that you want to advocate for, um, my sense is that you might be better off following them and saying, well, oh, by the way, there is another alternative. If there is another alternative, because I didn't hear that this, this you know, no, no excuse voting is going to solve the timeline problem. Because we're still going to have preliminary elections. No, right. We, yeah. we, yes, it definitely and is the not. The preliminary election is the problem right now. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, like, rape choice voting could help get rid of the, pre the preliminary yes. election. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to increase voter turnout, right? Correct. Like, so there's... But it may... Well, again, I mean, they, what they're saying, 
in, in, to advocate for it is that it may may increase candidate participation. Yeah, but like if like Pam saying her job is to reach as many voters, like brain choice right. voting isn't going to send a ballot to their house. No, no. Yeah, so like. We, it'd be nice if you could do both. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Let's do both. But in terms of right like the dates voters. that you're mm -hmm. talking about, like that's not going to be, like that's a separate thing. Under the, under the legislation that's up now for both local and statewide implementation at the House and the Senate, ranked choice voting would come in and would solve the preliminary problem. So I imagine that it addresses the date issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so so well, just, just so we're clear, though, that my job was to bring you issues that I had with the charter. And so yeah, that's right. one of the issues that I had. I'm not suggesting a position on ranked choice voting until, you know, I understand that it would eliminate the preliminary election and, and there are, there's a lot of value to it, you know, uh, but I, I don't want to suggest that um, I have a position on it in, in a public setting until, you know, I've heard what the, what the committee has to say on it. So I don't, I don't want to sort of, you know. Well, maybe it would be better than for you you to be silent at this opportunity, hear what they have to say, and then come back to us and get us to advocate for no excuse voting. Well, well, no, I think what Pam is saying that there are, are a number of issues that she's already identified that that um, that we need to consider, and that that she's not prepared at this point to take a public position on either ranked choice voting, no excuse voting, or any other kind of voting. Um, that she wants to raise uh, issues that, uh, that 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 are that make scheduling difficult for her right now. With how the charter is written. With how the issues yeah. within the charter, and um, but I think it is, it, it's entirely appropriate for her to speak at this at this forum to provide some context to um, to all of this. And how much time do you think you you, know, you need to make make your points, Pam? I, so, you know, I just need five or ten minutes okay. for the issue around the schedule. Okay. Um, and I will get back to you about the timing after I've had a chance to talk it over with the Board of Registrars. Okay. All right. So the question is, uh, in terms of the, the actual format, do we want to limit each speaker to um, three minutes? Do we want to do that and have uh, a, a topic like ranked choice voting limited to 20 minutes? total for, for the various speakers who want to address it pro or con. Um, what's, the, what's the pleasure of the committee about how we should uh, structure the forum? In terms of the public speaking, I think it's nice to have a time limit just so people don't have to sit around all night if we can talk. You know, it's different in this meeting than we have. People. I would anticipate that people would be interested in this, and you want to give a fair amount of time. So, so what do you, what do you like suggest? For, so, for when people have, when we have the Q and or the comment period, that we do cap public comment, and we should also cap presentations too. So, are you capping the amount, how long they can speak, not how many people can speak? I mean, do we have to have a oh. sign up and you know? Well, I mean, I think, yeah, like, so for, like, for presentations, I personally feel 15 minutes should suffice. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can't make your case in 15 minutes, like, mm -hmm. you should revisit that. But, mm -hmm. and then, and then when it's time for the public to speak, then the public, each person would get three minutes mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. So, that then suggests that what we're doing is information gathering, what we are doing, right? So, it's not so much a question and answer. We might... Because it, to ask all of our speakers, whomever they are, to stick around until the end and then wait out, you know, the last speaker to see if the 50th person who's speaking is asking a particular question. Rather, we hear the presentations, and then we hear the questions. And then we, we summarize the questions, and it guides our further research, right? So it's... It, that's my concept of what this forum is. To do, do, do other committee members have a different so kind of concept? So a panel of 
people talking, providing information, and then people have an opportunity to come to the mic or something like that and speak, or we can have them write it down and gather their questions and read it aloud, something like to that effect. And so people can be anonymous. <coughs> if they, if there's and they're asking questions of us, not of the panel. I think so, yeah. Or they're, or they're asking questions mm -hmm. for things that we need to research. Mm -hmm. I kind of think this is information gathering for this committee, mm -hmm. and we're, we're not being asked the questions. I think you should be asking the questions so that you're getting the information you need, because presumably no one here at this table is an expert on these issues. Okay. and. And yeah. we're there to hear from people who have more information than we do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I agree. The, I just, I just imagine that the 16-year-old voting could have 116-year-olds wanting to speak to us. Right. Well, but that's, would that's that be I'm part of the <laughs> like we're getting public input as well, right? Or no, yes. we're not yes. doing that. Yes. We, we are like if a hundred sixteen-year-old show up more power to them, right? Like, then that would tell us as a committee, well, this means... Well, they don't necessarily all speak. Maybe we can put some constraints, as we were saying. I mean, and one representative. Per exactly. And you can set grand rules or, like, requests, like, you know, if you agree with something that someone already said, you can just say, ditto and be done with it. You don't need to repeat yourself. Like yeah. I mean, it sounds like a really interesting meeting that I would want to come to. It's a meeting where 116 year old show up. That sounds like a beautiful two-hour cast <laughs> meeting, though. I know that's. Yeah. Well, we would, um, NCTV has already committed to television. Uh, I need to circle back to them to see if we mm -hmm. have staff to cover it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I kind of feel we have to have some ballpark sense that, you know, we're not going to let it go on for three or four hours. So some of our cap will be limited to the building being available past 10 p.m. because that's when staff leaves and needs to lock up the space. Yeah. And it's not a space that I have keys to, mm -hmm. so. It's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so we definitely can't go past 10. Um, I, we may be able to because school committee does, but I don't know. I would have to figure out logistics on how we could do that. Well, I suppose we don't need to. We don't need to put an end time on it. Right. I, I feel like it. this could happen in two hours. I mean, have an hour for presentation, have an hour for questions. I don't think we need to make it more complicated than that. And we could, depending on turnout that night, we could always say we will have additional forums. And if we have a ton of people, who are we may not be able to squeeze it all into one night. Yeah. And that would be information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, Molly, what are you suggesting in terms of that one hour for presentations? Do you want to allot 15 minutes to rank choice voting? Yeah, I mean, that's just a math problem. And I don't know how many, I don't remember how many points are, but divide an hour by the number of people. But I sort of appreciate some of Sam's, like, stick to 15 minutes or, like, go shoot yourself um, general well, frame. Well, I mean, I think the two, the two issues here that are going to draw the most um, the most uh, people who want to make uh, presentations are ranked choice voting and the lower you know, voting age of 16. Mm -hmm. So you know, we want to hear particularly from those proponents and any opponents who show up. So, mm -hmm. um, so we want to allot 15 minutes to each of those big issues and have speakers um, Limit individual speakers to three minutes. I think we can wait on that until we see who turns up. Because what if we have ten people? Are there? Oh, you mean the public? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Got it. I think we might be able to play that a little bit by ear until we know how packed the room is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. How many people can fit in this room? This one—it's big. It's two classrooms, so they can buy into it. They open the room. All right, so do we want to give 15 minutes to proponents. We know that they'll fill that time, and then 15 additional minutes to any opponents who, uh, to, to rank choice voting who wish to speak. Or do we want to have everything fit into that 15-minute window? 
Yes. Proposed yeah. No, yeah. I mean, don't give people too much time. Yeah. Because, yeah. You know, I don't need to hear them. Just go ahead. We're just making recommendations to the, to the, you know, to the city and. Uh, and I think to Lynn's point, you know, if suddenly we realize there's just this discussion that needs to be had about ranked choice voting or 16, you know, then we clearly know there's a lot of interest. We make another, you know, a lot more time to that at some future point. Maybe designate a meeting just for that issue. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're discovering that. I mean, this is also just to get the temperature of people, too. Exactly. So what, what, that's why when we just say elections, I was trying to elaborate a little bit more, but also keep that key word of elections in there because someone could maybe bring us something that we hadn't yeah, thought about. Right. Um, but my bigger question, I guess, is these four topics that we have somebody that's considered the expert mm -hmm. to yes. present it, because yes. I don't feel like that's me in any of these situations. Or I don't know if that's our role. It's not our role. Uh, no. But I think we, we have. We've got uh, uh, the city clerk will address both the election scheduling issues and the concept of no excuse voting and anything else that she wants to address. Uh, we know that there will be ranked choice voting advocates. Voter choice, voter choice mass. Yeah, and we know that the youth commission will address the lower uh, municipal voting age. Right? And people may show up and want to talk about election issues that you are yeah. none of us have thought about. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. true. That's yes, the, the nature of the right. forum. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I guess I'm hearing that um, uh, that we should limit uh, if we're gonna elect fifteen minutes to rank choice voting that um, tell the proponents that they've got half that time. And then you would say, is anyone opposed this? Well, does anybody else want to address on, you know, who, who yeah, who has... Well, the, why don't we let them, have a, let them have a presentation and then people sign up to, uh, to speak. It feels like we're putting a heavy thumb on the scale of ranked choice voting here. Mm -hmm. This is a, an election forum. Why don't we just give everybody a fixed amount of time to speak, no matter who you are, what your issue is, Get up to the microphone, tell us what your election issue is next, and then we have information. And we can come back to this room and discuss what we heard. That's really what a forum's about. Come give us information about what's on your mind with regard to elections. Yeah. I mean, the, the clerk's issues are not going to be the same as other people's issues, and as I said, there are going to be issues perhaps that none of us are even thinking about. So I think what? that just, just Sorry, I was just going to say that framing this meeting for the public will be important. This is what this is how we sort of envisioned this, but we recognize that you know we're inviting these people, and if folks would like to bring in another group at another point, there will be opportunities for that. And you know we're here to help facilitate this. We're, not we're giving notice to yeah. ranked choice mass. We're not inviting anybody. We're holding a forum. We're giving notice in various ways. It'll be on WHMP. Stan will get it into other media. There'll be flyers. There'll be emails sent. They'll, I'm sure all of you younger people will do the social media thing, and right. we'll get people there. Lovely, but I'm still young. I <laughs> really appreciate it. Uh, and, and, and then you're going to entertain what people bring to you. It's not, I don't think that we're, we're designing what we want to hear from people on elections. We're opening up a forum for people to talk to you about yes. elections. Yes. And, 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 Alan, the only reason that we're, we're, I mean, we're sort of maybe top heavy on ranked choice voting is we've already heard from a number of people who want right. us to consider ranked choice voting, and we know that there is an advocacy group. Yes, there's an yes. advocacy group. Both right. And also, okay. it's a fairly technical thing that people need to understand. Yeah. You need to be described by someone who knows how to describe it, because after what happens at this first meeting, we're going to be dealing with how we're going to use it, what elections we're going to use it for, whether we're going to do it for citywide or just for districts, whether we're going to be our largest. And, and it, again, it took East Hampton a good long while to sort through that. So I think the better introduction we have as to what is involved and what the options are and what the implications are, the easier our job is going to be. If we just give them a minute to say, you know, oh, I, this, is, you know this is why everyone in the state is considering it, thank you very much, we're not moving the ball at all. And it's going to make our job a whole lot harder 
going down the road. It's better to give a description of, if, if I can say, all right, don't, you know, just give an unbiased opinion of what you see to be the attributes of this system and leave it at that, and then we'll hear from people who may disagree with it, and then we come back and we decide what do we want to do with it. But to not, to give the public an opportunity to understand how it works mathematically, I think doesn't help us. Well, that's why I see like a distinguishing between these groups and the public talking, mm. because I feel like these groups have, like we need to learn about this too. And if we cap everyone at three minutes, including the proponents of these various things that we're cutting off our own learning of these things. So right. maybe we strike out the election scheduling from it, because that, that does seem really. different than the rest of these topics. And then we, it seems more administrative than, yeah. than which policy. Is what Pam was what you were saying. saying, right? Like, it's not necessarily something that needs to be in a forum, is just moving the dates of the charter. I mean, I can present something if you want, but if, you know, it, Okay. All right, so if we strike election scheduling, do we, do we want, though, to hear from people on the, the question of increasing terms from two to four years? Sure. Well, I think we want to hear what anyone wants to tell us about mm -hmm. yeah. with regard to elections. Mm -hmm. But there's not necessarily a group that we need to invite no. to speak. That's okay. I think this is okay. I don't think we need to worry about format. I think we can throw caution to the wind here. Well, a little bit. Ish. Okay. So, so are we going to limit people to three minutes? Is that, is that what, I, mean, I, I like what Alan said, that, that let's not structure it too much, but I do feel that, that there should be there should be time limit. Yes. Yeah. Unless there's just a, a five people or ten people. I mean, I don't see that happening. But if there's if there's not, I, get, I suppose if yeah, I'm gonna play it safe and do a few minutes. I just I agree with Linda that that's something we could see when people show up. Are you concerned about? I mean, can we just sort of decide once we're there? If there's five people, we give 15 minutes to the. Well, I, just, I know that Bob wants to we give some to direction to the proponents for ranked choice voting that mm -hmm. they're going to have. They're going to they're have audiovisual questions. Hmm? Audiovisual questions. They're going yeah, to have technology questions. You know, they have a, a they, yeah, they have a presentation. Yeah. And I'm going to say to them, you have 10 minutes. I still like the idea of 15 minutes to the presenters we're inviting and then We'll hear from folks based on that information, and then if there's more to share, if people feel like they want a similar platform, then we have another meeting for them. Okay. Gives us some structure. So, invitees 15 minutes, general public 3 minutes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if we show up and there are 5 people there, can we can visit. Dinner. That's what I'm saying. We can just let people know that that was our thought process, and then yeah. if they, but we're absolutely open to having, you know, folks speak on this more in depth at another point. Now, Stan, do you want to have a sign up sign up sheet that says name and issue, so that you don't have like ten, you don't have stacking of the deck, let's say, so you have the discretion mm -hmm. of of alternating between topics. Uh -huh. Well, I, I mean, I, I think we certainly should have a sign-up sheet so we know how many people are, are, are wanting to address us. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I mean, we could ask them to just give a short description of, of what issue they, or issues they, they, they're they going to raise. I mean, I've, I've seen circumstances where advocates for a particular issue will bring 100 people in and they'll all sign up. And you don't want to go through 100 even if you say to someone, but don't don't be repetitive, if you want to speak, you don't want to hear that. So but that's a public forum though, right? Like it seems a little too controlling to tell I mean that's the point of having public input. Yeah. Would it be strange? I don't know if this would work in this environment, but would it be strange to have like a you know, 
piece of paper parked for uh, ranked choice voting and one for 16 year olds and one for another issue and one for whatever and then people come up and if they have a question sort of put their question and as you're going through you sort of see how many of the same questions you have you can sort of choose from there I don't know if that would work in that environment it's sort of a smaller training thing but yeah. like a workshop almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I mean that would work if you have five people um, but it could also work if you have more people and people can sort of decide how invested they are. We also we could also put a sign-up sheet if they wanted to stay engaged. Then mm. we took their yeah. email and I don't know, sent out the agenda or I think your suggestion is a real good idea if we have a large crowd. You know, because that'll give you work with a small crowd. Well, I don't well, know how small, but yeah. yeah just like a sharpie attached and people can come up. Okay. Um, so we can talk about logistics of it at the next meeting. It was just mainly getting people to save the date. Um, <laughs> right? I mean, if we're yes. asking people to present the information there. Right. Um, and give them a... True. Good point. Yeah. And <clears throat> do... Is there preference on a flyer? Changes? I like that one. Can it... I mean... I love the color, but is that, isn't that expensive? Can it be black and white? Black and white. What's the matter with the color? It's expensive. Is it? If you have a budget, well, it's great. Print it. I know. Like, it it's, out it's without really being cut expensive. off. I actually like the the clarity of you know the check like check check, check marks. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just sort of clear in the. I like that one also. Oh. Okay. All right. So we're going low budget, but. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to remove election scheduling. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and I will I will handle what I call the traditional media. Sam, can you handle the social media um, publicity on this? If there's any to be done, I can also send it out to the various political people and then Divisible and then Pioneer Valley Resist, which has their. And it'll like make, I'll like make an event page. I can do that. Okay, so it'll go out on city Facebook, city Facebook, and city Twitter, and city website. Okay. All right, well, Sam, consult with, please consult with Lynn and see if there's any other social media beyond that that we should be, be using, okay? Cool. All right, uh, any other business tonight? Dinner? Adjourn. Okay, all in favor?